Closed captioning for this episode of the 52-Week Movie Challenge was made possible by the District of Intellectuals, Connoisseurs, and Sad Sacks. And by Hot Air from this featured critic directed to viewers like you. Thank you. Felicitations, thy fellow connoisseurs of the celluloid. To what extent shall we acquaint ourselves to our most distinguished of musings in what the finest of cinema has to offer? Shall it be how Marvel can never be considered the pinnacle of Kino, or mayhaps of the depths of how the head of one Charles Kaufman can excavate the catacombs of a posh posterior? Hmm... Ah, yes, but of course, the 52-week movie challenge. What hath originated in this merriest of occasions? Well, allow yours truly to pour your tea as I verily indulge within my bloated reasoning. What has felt like many fortnights ago, I was bestowed upon the most distinguished of non-fiction literature. Yes? Everybody's a critic of the 52-week movie challenge. This esteemed piece of fine print had slowly grown into the finest companion for my indulgences in unfamiliar motion pictures. If you permit me, I shall recall one ghastly pastime where I endeavored a remake of an undead motion picture. Kill the damn baby and save yourselves, you f***ing idiots! <laughs> Hollywood, always turning a blind eye towards glittering standards. Anywho, as I enjoy my spot of tea, treat yourself to my latest musings of what the youth of celluloid has to offer. Toodaloo! If you would have told me that a mainstream feminist film that's also a spin-off of the Sherlock Holmes lore would turn out to be an entertaining romp, I would have told you, does this outcome have a soul? Because this case is... A foot. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Enola Holmes is based on Nancy Springer's book series, which is also a spin-off of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's character, Sherlock Holmes. The film centers around the titular character, played by Millie Bobby Brown, who is the younger sister of the famous Sherlock, played by Henry Cavill. Yes, I checked while writing the script, it's Cavill, not Cavill. Moving on. On her 16th birthday, Enola discovers that her mother Eudoria, played by Helena Bottom Carter, had vanished. Her guardian, Mycroft, played by Sam Claffin, intends to send her off to a finishing school. Enola, however, isn't a typical woman of the Victorian era. You see, growing up, Eudoria raised her upon teachings in chess, jiu-jitsu, and so many other intellectual pursuits normally reserved for men. Enola runs off to London to find the whereabouts of her mother while escaping the clutches of her brothers and anyone else who dares to get in her way. I'm just gonna say right up front that the most that I've consumed from the Sherlock Holmes canon or anything related to such include the Robbie Downey Jr. films, the terrific BBC series starring Benedict Cumberbatch, and The Great Mouse Detective. When I first watched the trailer to this film, I thought it looked like a fun and pleasant time, and after I watched it, I found it quaintly met my expectations with its brisk humor and high entertainment factor. A series that Enola Holmes reminds me of is the show Penny Dreadful, one that also takes a lot of iconic characters to create something different. While enjoyable, I thought it took itself too seriously and could have had a better sense of humor about itself, but I digress. But Enola Holmes, by comparison, was exactly what I was looking for, a love letter to what makes the canon special while also having fun with the different direction that it takes. For Enola Holmes to succeed as a feminist narrative, it requires challenging a character's sense of ambition and who they really are, not making a character a role model without an ounce of humanity. This is why a film like Wonder Woman succeeds, but a film like Sucker Punch fails. The title character is intelligent, independent, and calculating in a way that makes her proactive, but she's also funny, vulnerable, and identifiable in a way that makes her feel human. Millie Bobby Brown was really fun to watch as the title character. I always thought of her as a talented young actor 
actress as Eleven in Stranger Things, but it's great watching her flex her more comedic muscles in this film. The rest of the supporting cast is also pretty solid. Claffin as Mycroft gets a lot of yucks as the conservative you love to hate. Henry Cavill is... an interesting choice as Sherlock. He's still able to capture the introverted chill and self-importance of the character, but making him look suave and pretty boy-like just felt off to me. I guess it's making Sherlock look like a celebrity compared to Enola, so I can't really fault the casting that much. I just wish he looked more homely than usual. Aside from Bobby Brown, the performance I didn't really expect to be that good was Helena Bottom Carter as Enola's mother. She's not really in the film that much, but Carter totally makes the most of her character and really adds a lot of depth to her role too. At first I thought she was the typical graceful, idealistic, and all-perfect mother who had to disappear far too soon, but she actually proved to be much more than that. In fact, the more I thought of it, the more I came around to really liking how unassuming and enigmatic she came across. Beneath that motherly compassion, there was this obsessive and meticulous mind that I couldn't really 100% pinpoint, in a good way, and Carter displayed that quite well. Speaking of minds, that kind of raises the question of what Enola would look like as an adult. If Sherlock would grow up as a self-centered and genius detective with everything handed to him, then Enola's path would equally be interesting. I definitely want to see a sequel to that idea instead of another Hollywood, what are you doing? Enola Holmes follows the tradition of films like Ferris Bueller's Day Off and Deadpool in the sense that the protagonist narrates her story to the audience as she goes along. With this kind of story, because Enola is such a charismatic character, this narrative approach works. It's also effective in playing into the fact that there are so many feminist figures throughout history that never got proper respect. Despite being completely based on a work of fiction, it makes the narrative in Enola Holmes feel like an adaptation of a classic novel from the Sherlock Holmes canon that never saw the light of day. With that said, I did have some issues with the film. I never really liked the character of Tewksbury? Tewoksbury? Tewoksbury? That guy. The actor who plays him is just fine, but every time he and Enola were together, the camaraderie just seemed to slow the pacing down. He wasn't funny, endearing, or even that interesting. When he doesn't come across as a plot device rather than an interesting character, he's just another damsel waiting to be rescued. The relationship between Enola and Sherlock is... Also okay, but aside from the intrigue behind Eudoria, I thought that the whole family dynamic could have been explored much more. Towards the beginning of the film, Enola and Sherlock share a quietly nice scene together where they catch up with each other after so much time has passed. We even get some comic relief from Mycroft and Enola. By the end of the film, I felt like that Sherlock just ended up as an afterthought. I get that the film is about Enola's independence, but having a satisfying conclusion to the family dynamic would have made the end of Enola's character arc feel so much more rewarding. Aside from that, Enola Holmes was still a decently fun time. It's kind of like a promising pilot to a fun TV series. It shows a lot of promise where it could go, even though it feels too singular with its main character. If a probable series could go north from here, I will be very happy with this film setting the groundwork for further installments. As it is, it's a fun and harmless romp. On a scale of 1 to 10, Enola Holmes is definitely... A charming case. So what's your take on Enola Holmes? If you've seen it, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, what's your favorite piece of media in the Sherlock Holmes canon? Hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell so you'll know when I post my future videos. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at FilmGeekDave. That's all for today and I'll see you next time when I review a film starring animals. Why have you come?